Hello, and welcome back to the stage. We're here for our next session. Um, I'm David Van Balen, and uh, our next session is around using Quarkus Funky to deploy Java serverless functions to multiple clouds. Um, this will be presented to you by my colleagues, uh, Jorge Valderas and Ever Romero. They are both uh, senior consultants here at Red Hat. Um, as a reminder, you can ask questions in the chat. We'll set aside some time to, to answer them. And uh, this session will, again, be recorded and made available on the Red Hat Developer YouTube channel. So you can watch it again after DevNation is over. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Ever and Jorge. Take it away, guys. Yeah. Hello. Uh, now, uh, we are Ever Romero and Jorge Valderas. Today, we work uh, well, uh, a little bit uh, with use Quarkus Funky deploy Java serverless to multiple clouds. We uh, do a little pass through about Quarkus, and after that, uh, what is Funky? We explain some of the many capabilities of that. And uh, we, we do a little demo uh, for uh, how to use Quarkus and Funky in a hybrid cloud. If you want to get uh, follow us in, in the different social network, and if you want to, to get the current project source, you can use the George GitHub in Funky Multicloud uh, repository. And now the agenda is what is Quarkus, what is Quarkus Funky, and on Hans Demo. Okay, today I start before you to spend a light of innovative technology in the revolutionary world called hybrid cloud computing Quarkus. Quarkus is not just another framework, it's a game carrier in the realm in the cloud computing, especially in the context hybrid environment. So let's delve into the reasons why Quarkus is vital of hybrid cloud. First and foremost, Quarkus brings a parallel specific to hybrid cloud deployments. Traditional cloud application of a surfer from high memory usage and slow startup items, which can be problematic when delaying with the hybrid cloud architecture that require quickly scalability and responsibilities. Quarkus, on another hand, boasts an impressive combination of small memory footprint and blazing fast startup items. This means that it's not only optimized resource utilization, but also enables rapid escalation and elasticity, making it if it's perfect fit for hybrid cloud scenarios. Another reason why Quarkus is essential for hybrid cloud is native cloud capabilities. And uh, in, it's typically for the hybrid cloud uh, environment and mix of hybrid hybrid infrastructure. Okay. I know uh, this is, in, in that case, we have the different elements or different moments, they how to build in the past the, the different scenarios or different frameworks. No, the Quarkus way use more effectively the room time and do really quickly and respond functionality workloads. Quarkus achieved this by using of innovative comp compute line approach, reducing memory consumption and optimizing runtime performance. Compared to the traditional frameworks, Quarkus offer superior efficiency, stability, uh, scalability, and enable the organization to maximize resource utilization and deliver responsible application. And in the native cloud capabilities, Quarkus is built from the ground up with the cloud native principles in mind. It seamlessly integrates with popular cloud native technologies like Kubernetes, containerization, and serverless computing. Quarkus provides native support for these technologies, allowing developers to easy build, deploy, and manage application across hybrid cloud environments. By leveraging Quarkus organizations ensure their application are cloud native by design, enable them to fully utilize, utilize the benefits of hybrid cloud architectures. Now, 
after this uh, brief about Quarkus. What is Quarkus Funky? Thank you, Heather. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, um, you should be seeing my slides. Uh, if if not, uh, if either David or Heber just uh, please interrupt me. So uh, thank you for the Quarkus overview. I'll, I'll now go over uh, and cover what, what exactly is Quarkus Funky. Um, so, so Quarkus Funky is a, is a portable Java API that can be used to uh, essentially write serverless functions in, in using Java. Uh, that can be deployed to multiple, uh, to essentially all the major cloud providers. So, so namely, specifically Azure, AWS, and, and Google Cloud. But it can also be deployed as a, a, a serverless function using Knative. So that's uh, ideal for uh, a Kubernetes cluster, uh, you know, OpenShift, or if you're targeting either in the cloud or on premises, um, that's where uh, Knative comes into play. And it can also be deployed as a standalone service. So even if it's you know using uh, uh, serverless, uh, that's a, kind of like a like a fifth option if you wanted to do that. So uh, we won't cover uh, when you should use serverless. That uh, there was another great talk about serverless computing a couple hours ago by uh, Steve Tran and, and John. I strongly recommend uh, you guys check that out if you miss it uh, once the video is available. Uh, but what I want to cover here is when, when you should consider using Quarkus Funky. So the idea is that you've identified that uh, uh, you want to use serverless, that you have a good use case, a, a good fit for, for serverless. Uh, obviously, that's not always the case. But if you fall, uh, you have one of those use cases where, where serverless is a great fit, then uh, when should you consider using Quarkus Funky? So if you're trying to target uh, multiple cloud providers, uh, this is definitely a, a great fit. Or if you're targeting hybrid, right? So you have some things that are maybe on the cloud or on premises, you have a combination of that. Um, and then, or, or maybe you have plans to swap cloud providers in the future, uh, or you don't want to be tied, like locked to one, one vendor. Uh, Quarkus gives you that, that flexibility, uh, or specifically Quarkus Funky. And then the other, uh, big selling point I would say is if you you want to minimize your learning curve. So I'm, I'm going to show you uh, since we had you would write a, a serverless function in all for all these cloud providers, and you'll see that even though it's a simple like like kind of like service or serverless function, you'll see how there's there's very uh, variations between all these uh, implementations. So when should you not use Quarkus Funky? So um, there are a few limitations, right? Because Quarkus is kind of like one way to think of it. Quarkus Funky is, is kind of the, the common denominator across all these clouds, right? So that's how they provide this portability. So it won't give you access to everything that you would have for a specific cloud provider. So, so specifically, namely, like more like low level access to APIs that are specific to these, uh, uh, to your cloud provider. Uh, it's also not a full replacement for REST. I mean, you can certainly use it. Uh, um, but if, if you want to use, uh, you know, expose the full server to REST API, then this Quarkus Funky may not be the best the best way to do it. And I'll explain why. That's just really the Quarkus Funky gets, infers your methods and, and they end up exposed as a, as a REST or sorry, as a GET or a POST method. So you don't have full control about what method gets uh, used. Like, for instance, you don't get delete or puts. And then not every like um, all, all HTTP features are available. So so similarly, like low level uh, specific features in, in the case of HTTP are not going to be available. So if you need any of that, um, you know, Quarkus Funky may not be the, the best option. So how do you get started with uh, Quarkus Funky or Quarkus in general? Right? So I, I you know, if, obviously, if you're new to Quarkus, I recommend you, you check out Quarkus.io that has great uh, information about Quarkus, uh, like like quick start tutorials. It also has a link to this uh, UI, the Code Quarkus UI IO, and that's uh, great to get a project started. So you 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 know you fill out this form, and then you have the option to download a uh, starter project, and then you choose what Java version that you're trying to use, and maybe uh, Java versus uh, it, it, what build tool you want to use, uh, whether it's Maven or Gradle, um, along with other uh, uh, functions like specifically. What libraries, what extensions you would you would like to you include in your starter project? And I included just like a subset of uh, the the funky specific libraries. 
But in general, if you're trying to do, even if you don't use uh, Funky, if you're doing uh, any any cloud development at all, like for AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, I strongly recommend that you check out the extensions that we have available, uh, well, the Quarto softwares, uh, because it really is a time saver. Like I've, I've done a lot of development, uh, in, in my case, for, for AWS, and it was really a time saver because you don't really have to uh, know a lot of the, about the details. I mean, it, it really does help you get started and it saves a lot of the, the boilerplate code that you would have to write otherwise. So here's now let's get into the some of the specifics, right? So how do you write a, an AWS Lambda in Java, right? So here's a very simple grid in Lambda that's uh, implementing. There's an interface that you have to implement the request handler and that's a straight from the AWS SDK. That's not uh, Quarkus specific. But then, uh, you know, uh, Quarkus uses the built-in, uh, you know, Java CDI dependency injection that, that's built into Java that was uh, kind of like in the JavaX namespace. Now it's in the Quarkus 3.0 that uh, that was moved to the Jakarta because that's uh, uh, using the Jakarta E uh, specification. So uh, these annotations, uh, that's what I'm talking about, the inject and the name annotation, those are part of the, the Java uh, built-in CDI. So fairly simple service here. So you have an entry point. This is your, uh, you know, handle request method, and then from here you would call your, uh, you know, your your application layer, your your business layer. Uh, in this case, this is a simple uh, greeting service uh, that just returns an output back. So how do you write the similar function in Azure uh, using Java? So you can see how this is the same like you know a gradient function that's doing effectively the same and you can see how there starts to get uh, a little more more complex uh, i mean nothing wrong i mean that's just how they implemented uh functions in azure so so it's it's a, and it, there's also a little more error handling here but it gives you the idea how there's these differences that uh if you're you know actively developing for, for two providers then uh there's going to be a learning curve for 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 both of these and then the third uh flavors the google cloud functions again similar function i mean the same function similar code but it's likely different uh so so now you have three flavors of the same like, same code using effectively doing the same thing and then the last example for k natives that's also also you know fairly somewhat complex uh, compared to the others but but still for doing something simple um you know there's uh, about 10 lines of code that you need to to write for this and it would be very depending on your cloud provider so now, how does this look in Quark? If you were using Quarkus Funky, uh, that's it, right? I mean, this is it. Like you essentially use the, the add funk annotation, and then here's the the, the service is just calling the, the same uh, service method and uh, returning an output, and then the same injections, so CDI injections to inject your service. So it does simplify a lot of things. Um, and then, I mean, especially if you're targeting like said two or, or more of these uh, cloud providers. Uh, and and it will it will save a lot of time in especially in your development and it minimizes your your learning curve. So now let's get into the demo details. So what we did is we we essentially wanted to show showcase that hey you know you have the same code base can you deploy it to these multiple cloud providers uh, and and, and KNAV as, as as well. So the way we started this project was using this uh, uh, Maven command, which is the equivalent of what you can do in the code Quarkus IIO, uh, that one will give you a zip file that you will start, you know, strike in your local directory. This will just essentially generate those files in your uh, local file system. So it's, it kind of saves you one one extra step. So it's just a matter of preference, but uh, this is kind of the starting point for the template uh, for our demo. Obviously we added more more code to it. And then the other approach uh, was that because, you know, this, when you deploy it, it's, it's it, even though it's the same Java code, uh, the dependencies are going to be different. Like right? you, you, you need to include your cloud-specific library. So, so your Google Cloud library for for uh, Google Cloud Functions, or your Azure Functions, or your Lambda Functions. So that's why we have, uh, or the approach we took was to essentially create a kind of like a specialized pump file. Uh, the pump file is in Maven. That's that's where you define your your Java dependencies for for those not familiar. Uh, you could do the same with with Gradle. And then essentially using that pump file, it's the same code base, just a slightly different dependencies because you don't want to bake in all the, you know, Azure libraries into an AWS deployment. That wouldn't be a good practice. Um, so with this specific pump files, then you can generate different jar files and then you would, you would deploy that to your specific cloud provider or, or to uh, your Kubernetes cluster. So now let's actually get into the demo. Uh, I'm going to showcase the, AWS and Azure, and then we'll switch back to Heather, who will do uh, Google Cloud and uh, Knative. 
So let's, uh, well, not quite done yet. So can still see, yep, I can see the screen uh, or maybe not. Okay, no, no worries. Let me share my. Yeah, I can. I can. I, I guess I needed to re reshare my screen because I switched to the slides. Um, you can. You can. It's is that that that's mine, right? It's. Sorry, no, I was just a little bit, a little yeah. bit like, can, can you can you see my screen now, Heber? No, no, I not can. yet. Okay, let me let me just try it again. Uh, so, window, and oh, sorry, I was yeah, I needed to do this entire screen. Now, now I got it. Okay, uh, is it now showing the? So are you seeing the GitHub? Yes. Okay, thank you. So yeah, so this is that link that I share on the chat. This is uh, essentially will give you the instructions how you want to how you can build it locally this project, uh, and then uh, like I said, this is instructions are specific to Azure and then Lambda each cloud provider, along with any any prerequisites that you want to. Uh, uh, that, that you may need to like if you don't if you're not doing aws obviously you'll need the cli and in this case we're also using sam for, for deployment so let me start there i'm going to start with the aws deployment um so i'm going to show that uh, i'm going to call the uh this, this is the aws CLI. So i'm calling the sts service with get caller identity just to uh you know confirm that i'm uh, indeed logged in so i did that uh, oh sorry it's typo and yep, that's showing that I'm I'm there. I'm, I'm already logging. So now I'm going to just follow the, the instructions. I'm going to um, do a Maven clean package. So that's building, rebuilding. I'm skipping tests. The one important thing I want to highlight here is that I'm pointing to that POM uh, AWS POM specific that has the dependencies that I need to deploy uh, into AWS. So next, I'm going to use. So, so for those not familiar, if you're doing Lambda developments, you need to use uh, SAM, which is kind of like a specialized CLI and, and, and templates for uh, deploying serverless artifacts. Um, and what that will do, it's essentially a, a generates a, at the end of the day is a cloud formation template that that's being generated. Um, so here, I'm gonna just I'm using the guide as I'm gonna set the, the default parameters. Uh, except for this one, I have to say, yes, this is okay. And then this is going to start my deploying. So it's essentially taking that jar that I built and then it's, it's, it's a learning to an S3 bucket. And then, um, it knows how to, by using SAM, it knows how to tell Lambda to use that uploaded jar from, from the S3 bucket directly. So now if I switch to my, um, uh, uh, console. And then I go to the cloud formation, which is uh, so the, the templates that you would use to deploy any any artifact to AWS. Um, I should see. So here's my the, the column the stacks, right? So here's the stacks that shows how uh, the deploy the, the resources that are being created. So it starts with a role. It's going to uh, well, this tells me like it, and it's a lambda, and then it, it requires an an HTTP an API gateway in front of the lambda to expose it via HTTP. So while that's going, let me just jump into the um, code for a little bit um so here's here's uh, our function right this is really that that's it like there's a greeting service uh we did include a, an additional function here uh, uh because you can have multiple functions in the same deployment uh, you may not need that but in in you know in this case just to show it's a demo so that's that's okay so one thing what i was showing that uh when you see this uh, a method that has an input. So the, the funky framework will infer this and it will automatically make it a post, uh, a post operation because it, it knows that it needs an input. If it doesn't have any parameters like this function here, this hello, uh, this, is just, this is just a get, right? But you don't really have control as to say, oh, I want this to be a delete. So that's that's what I meant earlier about not being a full uh, uh, rest replacement. So the other thing I wanted to highlight here for those not familiar, and this is, has nothing to do with uh, quark code, Sorry, with Funky, is it's just in general, Quarkus gives you this capability where 
it will actually generate these SAM templates for you where uh, just by building this jar with the libraries, it will generate this SAM template that you can use to just say, hey, you know, go ahead and deploy this. So if you don't know how to deploy a serverless function, this is a great way to get started, right? So you can you can see how this is using the, uh, this, it will generate the JVM. So, so, so as, as Heber showed, like you have the JVM builds or you, you can also use a native build. So it will give you both flavors that, that you can use. Uh, it's just gonna be a different uh, command line. And I did include on, on that, on the readme here's the uh the native build i'm not going to show that around this here because it, it does take uh you know a few extra minutes uh to do the native build but we can see now that our, our deployment is completed so i'm going to uh export this to a, a, an environment variable named url and i'm gonna export this and then um, i'm gonna use my i included like a test command here that you can use the first one is just doing a simple get with a core command, and it's including the time. Now you notice uh, this is actually the start, the, the kind of the cold start. So it does take like six seconds, uh, but if I just rerun it, then it's taking like, you know, a, a, it's a lot faster, right? Because it's already uh, kind of like warm, warm up. So now let me just show you an, uh, the example of the post method, uh, which is essentially the function that does take a parameter and then I'm passing uh, AWS, and it's just going to echo back like "Hello AWS," and this is already one warm up. So it's all these response times are going to be uh, sub seconds. So just a quick, uh, you know, showing you the resources. We refresh this stat. You can see how it generated our, our Lambda function here, and also an API gateway that's front ending the uh, the Lambda function, and that's just like an AWS uh, specific requirement of how they expose uh, of how you can expose Lambda functions. And that's that's a function deployed. Um, so now let me uh, quickly switch gears to the Azure, let's do the Azure demo. And uh, so let me switch to this tab. I already have these parameters uh, exported. So so if you're running this on with your own account, you just make sure you populate those those values. So I'm gonna do AC login. I should already be logged in, but just to show that it's you know it's it's already it's it's locked back in. Uh, and now I'm gonna use the uh, this Maven clean package. So Azure, um, that this demo is, is is the only one that's a little more different than the other, well, at least the AWS, Lambda, and uh, Google Cloud are going to be very similar in that we're using like, like the CLI provided by the vendor to deploy. In this case, we're actually using an Azure plugin, a Maven plugin to deploy. So that's why uh, it, that command was a little different. Uh, and while that's going, I want to show you just the difference. So, so if I compare the POM files of AWS and, and Google Cloud, just to show you how really the only difference is that library, right? That Amazon Lambda or Google Cloud. Now, if I compare AWS with Azure, that is going to be a little more different, but that's just because of uh, we're using that Azure plugin, right? That's really, it, it just needs more information, more parameters about how to deploy it. But for the most part, it's just going to be that library that's that's really the the main difference. And then, yeah, this is Azure specific parameters. So let's. Uh, um, this is still okay. So now this is in running. Let's see. Let's not deploy here. Um, We may need to, let me try one more time. And then if not, we'll, we'll just skip this demo. I I, know, I tried before, um, right before the call. So I'm not sure why that one failed. Uh, but I mean, the idea is the same. Like once once it gets deployed, uh, now you have your your Azure function deploy. Uh, this looks a little, a little better. And then it's just gonna show up here as a, as a, as a function. Function app. And let's check questions so far. Let's do a quick refresh here. So once this is deployed, I'll I'll use the the same command just so I kind of like to show you the, the hello world.
it only really takes a minute. So um, if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to put them, drop them in the chat and we can we can answer along the way. No, the token should be valid. I, th I think it's it's working this time. Um, I just this is the step that takes the longest. Okay, we we may want to maybe switch. Uh, you want to switch over to your demo and then we we'll, we'll can come back to it if, if we have time at the end. Does that sound yeah. good? Let's Perfect. stop. I'm sure. Okay, do you see my screen now? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. We now start with a Google Cloud uh, function. The idea is uh, really similar. Uh, we use the, this, the same code artifact that, that use yours for AWS and Azure. The only difference is now it, that we add, oh, I, I, we, we add the different elements or the, the, the different uh, configuration in the POM uh, structure. But uh, but really, the application is the same. Let me show. Currently, I I use the same the same application that use that use yours for deploy all of that different elements. And how to deploy that? Okay. We need to uh, init. Currently, I I complete the the, the init of my my laptop, my, my laboratory. But currently, I I show how to configure that. Okay. In that case, I use the same configuration uh, for that service. And now I need to choose the service for, for that, okay. Sorry, is okay. Currently, I, I choose the, the the project that I need to use for that. The, the current project is that. I co configure that project in the in the Google Cloud. And now the the idea is deployed the current uh, the current function with the the the, the correct parameters. Okay. We can use the Google Cloud function deploy Quarkus function. In that case, it's entry point is the is the same Quarkus GCP because it's focused to the Google Cloud. The function uh, is HTTP Quarkus function because it's the, the function that currently I want to deploy. And add the runtime, the tiger, and uh, in that case, a load authentication because I link it with the with the my Google Cloud authentication. And in that case, it's in the the, the target deployment. I, I 
I need to create that. Okay, let me create that artifact. This artifact is with the, the same code for all the different loads. Perfect. And now I deploy with the Google Cloud Query. take some minutes for, for deploy that of different elements. Let me draw with my screen. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat if all this is going. Yeah. Perfect. Now we have the application deployed in that URL. Okay. Let me add this URL. For use in the consumption mode. Okay. Now I deployed in Google Cloud that application and only need to call this application. The first time take a little bit more time. In that case is for a second, four seconds. But let me consume the other okay. context, context script. Yeah, and reduce. If I test again, um, the URL hello, we can see that the, the, the timing is really less because it only take time when it started the first serverless element or element or server serverless part. Okay, and now uh, for deploy the K native, uh, we can use the same code that uh, you you can see in that in that part, but only the the important thing is use, in that case, OpenShift with a K-native CLI and OpenShift CLI for different uh, elements. How about OpenShift? In OpenShift, you need to create or you need to, to, to configure the operator, the serverless operator, because we need to use that serverless operator for deploy all of that uh, different serverless uh, artifacts. What is the, the important configuration that you, have, that you need to be present for to deploy it in the Knative service? In that case is Knative service. Uh, you need to create one of that for deploy your different applications. The configuration is uh, simple. In the newest version of, of that operator, you need to deploy it into the namespace uh, Knative service. Uh, uh, but in the in the last versions, uh, you need to you you could be changed that that namespace. Okay, this is the the the, the configuration that you need for deployed serverless over over OpenShift in the K native way. Now return to the to the code. Now uh, the idea is create the project from K native. I was create this this project. Okay. 
Okay, currently the, the project is, is ready. And we need to deploy, we need to, to, to deploy that code. Okay. I need to use the, the I use different okay, native clips for this reason I use that. Because we need to the correct version for for, uh, for the, the application. Okay. Okay, you missed the font part. If, if font deploy, if you and see. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Now is the image is building. Okay, if, if in the well, if you have any, if any have any any questions, and and this is just to point out that this is using the there's a function a func.yaml that tells it how to deploy. So in this case, we're actually in this in terms of time, like it's actually pushing a, a, a an image that's already pushed to Quayo. Uh, it's a public image, so anybody can also deploy that. But you can change that file to if you want to deploy. You can tell how to, to build it, um, and and I will actually build the image with your code and then deploy it to the in this case to OpenShift. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And. Uh, this is a, a really uh, important thing for for use this kind of strategy because uh, we get four important capabilities talking about the hybrid cloud no, native cloud capabilities uh, in quarkus and funky is built to the from to the ground up uh, with cloud service principles in mind and polyglot support because we can deploy uh, the same artifact in different clouds and support multiple program languages. Uh, in that case, you you, you can you, you don't need to, to create in, in in different language languages or different uh, frameworks for for the for for the cloud, and uh, you reduce your your, your resource uh, resourcing in your cloud and your cloud allocations. It's resource optimization, and uh, you do the developer productivity. Okay. Okay, let me check. Is it using like a different jam like font jamal because it shouldn't be yeah, the same? Yeah, but I, I forget to change my for my way funky okay and i think we're we're close on time so we may need to yeah okay okay not worse all right thank you so much uh jorge and Ever, for that uh that really informative presentation um you know it's really great to know uh we we could do um, serverless with Quarkus on uh, OpenShift. Now it's coming to the other public clouds as well. So we can run it on AWS, on Azure, and on, on Google Cloud as well. Um, so as a reminder uh, to everyone who's with us, um, you know, and thanks for joining us again, uh, this is being recorded and we will make it available to you on the Red Hat Developer YouTube channel. Um, so. Uh, thanks again, and do join us for our upcoming sessions, both on this uh, stage and on the other stage as well that are happening in parallel. Thank you. Goodbye.